Okay, so we're going to do a few examples now. Uh, just a couple of examples to um, try and identify a couple of compounds. So our first one that we've got is we've got an unknown compound. Um, let's get rid of that. Um, has sharp absorbances in the IR um, at these two frequencies, broad absorbance at 3,300, and we've also got a little bit of elemental analysis and some mass spectra data as well. So let's have a look. The first thing I'd always do is do your elemental analysis, um, which should be quite straightforward. So we've got carbon, we've got hydrogen, and we've got oxygen in here. And uh, let's have a look. So we've got 54... 5% of that, 36.3% uh, oh, no, being oxygen, let's just get rid of that, put that in the wrong one, 36.3% uh, for oxygen, and then we've got 9.2% for hydrogen. The reason I know it's 9.2% is because all of these have to add up to 100 and they've given me the other two, so it's 100 minus the other two. If you divide that by 12, that by 1, and that by 16, you will get the following ratio, uh, 4.52. Uh, let's have a look, oxygen is 2.27, and hydrogen, of course, 9.2. Divide through the smallest one, you get 2, 1, and 4. So my empirical formula is C2H4O, but they've also given me the molecular iron as being 88.1. So that does not add up to 88. Uh, it's not heavy enough. If you work that out, you will find your molecular formula, which will, you need to times that by 2. Uh, this comes to uh, 44. So if you times that by 2, you will have C4H8O2. So that there is your molecular formula. I've got four carbons, a couple of oxygens. So what I'd be thinking at the moment, a couple of oxygens, I'm probably thinking about carboxylic acid perhaps. Um, I've got to have some double bonds in there, haven't I? Uh, because I've only got, I've got C4H8. Um, if it was fully saturated, I'd have more hydrogens there. Um, okay, so now let's look at my IR. A clue here is I've got a broad absorbance there. So that is going to be OH. I've also got a peak here at 1690, which is C double bond O. So um, you're probably thinking um, carboxylic acid, aren't you? This one here, a sharp absorbance uh, there, you're looking at being uh, a CH bond. So that's not particularly useful for us. But the ones that are useful are these two. So I've got a carboxylic acid, I've got four carbons. So what's a possible structure? Well, one possible structure would be this guy, butanoic acid. Um, it may not be, um, I haven't got enough information to tell me about how the carbon chain is actually built up. But let's have a look, I've got four carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens and two oxygens. So it fits the formula, it fits the IR data. I could have my CH a carbon coming off here rather than it being a linear uh, molecule, but I don't have any more information, so I can't say um, whether it's this isomer or whether I perhaps got my carbons arranged differently with my carboxylic acid there and a CH3 group coming off like so. So it could be that one or that one, but job done. Okay, so let's do one more example. Um, we've got um, another unknown compound. We've got a sharp absorbance here and a peak here at 1740. Elemental analysis we've got as well, a molecular iron, and we've also got a base peak at 57, which shows the loss of a hydrogen atom. So let's try and put all this together. Again, always do your elemental analysis first. I've got carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Um, it's given me the information for all of them. So I've got 62% carbon. I've got 27.6% for oxygen, and that leaves me with 10.4% 
but hydrogen, divide this void by 12, that by 16, and that by one, and you get a ratio of 5.17 to 1.725 to 10.4. Divide, divide by the smallest one, which causes this one, you get one, three, and six there. So that gives me an empirical formula of C3H6O. Does that add up to my uh, molecular iron is 58? Um, yes, it does. So that is also my uh, molecular formula as well, which is good. So uh, what can this tell me? Um, I have got a, a absorbent set. That is obviously going to be my C double bond O. Oh, this guy again is CH, so not of huge use to me. Um, is it going to be an alcohol though? No, I, I'm not seeing an OH absorption there. That would be a very, uh, that would be a much broader um, there, um, not a sharp absorbance. Um, an OH is much broader. Um, so uh, what, what, what are we thinking? We're probably thinking it's got to be unsaturated. I haven't got enough hydrogen for it to be a fully saturated molecule. Um, I've got this, a C double bond O, so that makes sense. So uh, it could be a propanone, like so, that's C3H6O, um, or it could of course be propanol, and I've got an aldehyde group as well. Um, so, that's what I've got, but if you have a look, it's giving me this information. It's got a base peak at M over Z of 15, showing the loss of a hydrogen atom. So, is that going to be, does that make sense well? Does that give me any clues <coughs> as to which one it is? Well, I think based on that, it's going to be propanol, and that is due to a loss of that hydrogen atom there, which is popped on. So um, I've got my M over Z of 58, which is my molecular iron there, and then I've also got your CH3, CH2, CO plus, which is your peak at 57, and therefore I can decide which isomer it is, and it is propanol which is the boy that we need today.